The Legacy. It wasn't televised, but it's an intriguing mystery, an unfolding of a unique history that even the blind can see. And whether an African dynasty or our contemporary society, it's a meaningful, magical journey. And to tell our whole story would take all eternity. It wasn't televised, but I was a witness to thousands of Africans who went through the awfulness of slavery back in the late 1400s. Then again, the ancient Mesopotamian, Indian, Chinese, Aztec, Inca, and Mayan civilizations, all of them too, knew about slavery's limitations, debilitations, and devastations. It wasn't televised, but I watched as our ancestors were removed by force from our culture, language, and the motherland. Plus, families were torn apart. Women separated from their children and men stripped of their manhood. But if there's one lesson to be learned, it's God works all things together for good. It wasn't televised, but I noticed an ugly greed that I cannot compare that left so many human lives beyond repair. Yes, we know that it was the Portuguese, Dutch, and British who controlled most of the Atlantic slave trade. However, it was the powerful West African chiefs too upon whom some of this guilt must be laid. It wasn't televised, but in the 1600s, in the new world called America, our black hands labored and toiled without demonstration or much compensation while building up the wealth of the southern plantation. No one has ever thanked our ancestors for building the American dream. And after hundreds of years to Dr. King, it was still an unattained thing. It wasn't televised, but our women were raped, abused, molested, and manipulated. And our men totally humiliated, mutilated, castrated, and lynched. Nevertheless, they were proud men, men of strength, who facing an uncertain future and even death never flinched. It wasn't televised, but our black men were confident warriors, making their contribution to the 1775 American Revolution, only to receive disrespect as a retribution for simply trying to be a part of our country's solution. And the ultimate condemnation came at the hands of our United States Constitution. It wasn't televised, but America's founding fathers wrote the Declaration of Independence, July 4th, 1776. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It wasn't televised, but somebody explained how our society could have endorsed these words and still miss out on real happiness. Like all men are brothers on God's list. A simple kiss. The fact that we are still in the land of the living should be bliss. And that we can worship our God in the beauty of his holiness. For we too are children of the King and all our blackness and nappiness. It wasn't televised, but we have repeatedly tried to cash in on these noble thoughts that all men are created equal and possess certain unalienable rights. Nonetheless, the banks of political power, red tape and bureaucracy have placed these checks on temporary hold and it's jive time games like that that make black people so bold. It wasn't televised, but our oldest and strongest institution has always been the church. We were held back and put down for so long, but it was through the church that we took care of our own. We helped bury the dead and gave support to the widows, orphans, and the sick, and to those temporarily unemployed and only down for a lick. 
It wasn't televised, but we survived racial discrimination. Even with the so-called January 1, 1863 Emancipation Proclamation. We learned in secret how to read and write and studied by day and by night. This became our true liberation. In short, participation in America's freedom through education. It wasn't televised, but we have endured because of the wisdom of men like Nat Turner and Frederick Douglass, whose voice was the pen. And through the vision of women like Evangelist Sojourner Truth and Harriet Tubman, whose Underground Railroad in 1830 gave black people their freedom again. It wasn't televised, but we overcame the cynicism, skepticism, and pessimism. When in 1857, the Supreme Court ruled in the famous Dred Scott case, denying Scott's right to be free, and declaring that blacks were not a part of the American race. You don't understand how hard it is being me. Don't you remember Joseph Sinke of the Amistad in 1839 saying, Give us free. It wasn't televised, but somehow despite blacks not being allowed to purchase and own land, or even being permitted to travel throughout the land, in 1868, John W. Minard became the first African American to be elected to the United States House of Representatives. Now he's the man. It wasn't televised, but we must never forget that hundreds of blacks were killed for simply exercising their right to vote, for challenging the sin of segregation, for organizing workers, and for even attending school. Now, as much as we all have mourned the terrorist attacks of 9-11, we must never forget that blacks in America were being terrorized daily long before 1887. It wasn't televised, but we know that Booker T, W.E.B., Marcus Garvey, the SCLC, and the NAACP were about progressiveness and productivity. At one point, we were not allowed to read or write, but we have found that some of the nation's finest universities now, that's tight. It wasn't televised, but our significant legacy has been analyzed, capitalized, criticized, downsized, editorialized, philosophized, plagiarized, politicized, popularized, scrutinized, sensationalized, theorized, unauthorized, and unrecognized. But today, it is legitimized because we have recognized that our eyes are still on the prize. It wasn't televised, but you can obviously see how rich and wonderful our history is. And the next time you're going through struggles and pain and feel like your life is in vain, and you think you can't handle the shame and deal with false blame, remember the history, the family, the legacy, and remember my name. Remember my name. Remember my name. I'm the millions of nameless souls removed from Africa by force and perished at sea and never made it to America, Brazil, Mexico, or the Caribbean islands. I'm Kunta Kinte. I'm Negro. I'm colored. I'm black and I'm proud. I'm Afro-American. I'm African-American. I'm Jackie Robinson. I'm George Washington I'm Carver. W.C. Handy. I'm Jelly Roll I'm Morton. the Harlem Renaissance. I'm the Harlem Globetrotters. I'm the Urban League. I'm the Negro Baseball I'm League. I'm the Tuskegee Airmen. I'm Langston Hughes. I'm James Weldon Johnson. I'm James Baldwin. I'm Lorraine Hansberry. I'm Hattie McDaniel. I'm Carter G. Wilson. I'm A. Philip Randolph. I'm Dr. Charles Drew. I'm Dr. Daniel Hale Williams. I'm Madam C.J. Walker. I'm Mary McLeod Bethune. 
Jackson. I'm Mahalia Jackson. I'm Dorothy Dandridge. I'm Josephine Baker. I'm Billy Holiday. I'm Muhammad Ali. I'm Joe Lewis. I'm Sonny Liston. I'm Joe Frazier. I'm Larry Holmes. I'm Mike Tyson. I'm Sidney Portier. I'm Bill Cosby. I'm Richard Pryor. I'm Harry Belafonte. I'm Red Fox. I'm Eddie Murphy. I'm Flip Wilson. I'm Moms Maple. I'm Jesse Owens. I'm Marion Anderson. I'm Paul Robertson. I'm Thomas Dorsey. I'm James Cleveland. I'm Shirley Caesar. I'm Andre Crouch. I'm Kirk Franklin. I'm the Mighty Clouds of Joy. I'm Yolanda Adams. I'm the Five Blind Boys. I'm Thurgood Marshall. I'm Rosa Parks. I'm Ralph Bunch. I'm Stokely Carmichael. I'm Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I'm Elijah Muhammad. I'm Malcolm X. I'm Louis Farrakhan. I'm Jesse Jackson. I'm the Black Church. I'm Richard Allen. I'm W.J. Seymour. I'm Dr. Frederick K.C. Price. I'm Nikki Giovanni. I'm Alex Haley. I'm Huey Newton. I'm Bobby Seal. I'm Eldritch Cleaver. I'm the Black Panther. I'm the Black Power Movement. I'm Tommy Smith. I'm John Carlos. I'm Gordon Parks. I'm Angela Davis. I'm Maya Angelou. I'm Toni Morrison. I'm Oprah Winfrey. I'm Althea Gibson. I'm Florence Griffith Joyner. I'm Arthur Ashe. I'm Colin Powell. I'm Condoleezza Rice. I'm Clarence Thomas. I'm Coretta Scott King. I'm Kwasi Mfume. I'm Maynard Jackson. I'm Tom Bradley. I'm Adam Clayton Powell Jr. I'm Andrew Young. I'm Barry Gordy Jr. I'm Quincy Jones. I'm Will Chester Ingram. I'm Anna Juanita Ingram. I'm Nat King Cole. I'm Natalie Cole. I'm Sammy Davis Jr. I'm Bill Bojangles Robinson. I'm the Nicholas Brothers. I'm Louis Armstrong. I'm Duke Ellington. I'm Count Basie. I'm Charlie Parker. I'm John Coltrane. I'm Miles Davis. I'm Winford Marsalis. I'm Branford Marsalis. I'm Alice Coltrane. I'm Sarah Vaughn. I'm Ella Fitzgerald. I'm Eartha Kitt. I'm Donnie Hathaway. I'm Marvin Gaye. I'm Al Jarreau. I'm Henry Louis Gates Jr. I'm James Earl Jones. I'm Arthur Mitchell. I'm Alvin Ailey. I'm Leotine Price. I'm Jesse Norman. I'm Kathleen Battle. I'm Shirley Chisholm. I'm Ida B. Wells Barnett. I'm Don Cornelius. I'm Soul Train. I'm James Brown. I'm Ray Charles. I'm Jimi Hendrix. I'm B.B. King. I'm Diana Ross. I'm Denzel Washington. I'm Halle Berry. I'm Whoopi Goldberg. I'm Spike Lee. I'm John Singleton. I'm Earth, Wind, and fire. I'm Luther Vandross. I'm Cicely Tyson. I'm Dick Gregg. I'm Michael Jackson. I'm Janet Jackson. I'm Tina Turner. I'm Prince. I'm Jackie Jorner Kersey. I'm Stevie Wonder. I'm Kenneth Babyface Edmund. I'm R. Kelly. I'm Whitney Houston. I'm Aretha Franklin. I'm Gladys Knight. I'm Barry White. I'm Grand Master Flash and the Furious Five. I'm Run DMC. I'm Russell Simmons. I'm P. Diddy. I'm Jay-Z. I'm Beyonce. I'm Notorious B.I.G. I'm Tupac Shakur. Cool. I'm Snoop Dogg. I'm LL Cool J. I'm Salt and Pep. I'm Queen Latifah. I'm Most Deaf. I'm Talib Kweli. I'm Nas. I'm Common. I'm The Roots. I'm Wilt Chamberlain. I'm Dr. J. I'm Michael Jordan. I'm Magic Johnson. I'm Kareem Abdul Jabbar. I'm Kobe Bryant. I'm Shaquille O'Neal. I'm Willie Mays. I'm Willie McCovey. I'm Henry Aaron. I'm Barry Bonds. I'm Jim Brown. I'm O.J. Simpson. I'm Evelyn Ashford. I'm Gail Devers. I'm Marion Jones. I'm Serena Williams. I'm Venus Williams. I'm Tiger Woods. I'm Jet Magazine. I'm Ebony Magazine. I'm Essence Magazine. I'm BET. I'm thousands of other significant names, far too many to mention here, but whose contribution to the success of our struggle is outstanding. I'm the United Negro College Fund. I'm Alcorn State University. I'm Bethune-Cookman College. I'm Charles Drew University of Medicine and Science. I'm Clark Atlanta University. I'm Fitz University. I'm Florida A&M University. I'm Grambling State University. I'm Hampton University. I'm Howard University. I'm Morehouse College. I'm Morgan State College. I'm Selma University. I'm Spelman College. I'm Tuskegee University. I'm Xavier University. I'm the thousands of promising young black men and women who never reached 20 and will never go to college. Not because of the Ku Klux Klan's racism, but because of the uncontrolled black-on-black terrorism. I'm all those who've been gunned down by the cursed black crips and bloods whose whole generation has grown up without ever connecting to their past or pondering on their present or possessing a positive knowledge of their own people. 
I'm all those in an early grave who will never see their destiny. And that's the real irony of our story, because our forefathers sacrificed their lives so free to make sure that our lives would be filled with peace and prosperity. I'm some of those wannabe thugs, pimps, roughnecks, gangsters, and hip-hop rappers who are utterly blind and cannot see the family, the history, the legacy. So let us rise. Let us rise up, old valley of dry bones, and leave all of this negativity alone. Let us rise and stop gunning down brothers because they're wearing red. Nobody's dreams are good if they're dead. Let us rise and remember our contribution to the beginning of civilization. When we do our part, we can give the world a reason for celebration. Let us rise up and make Hayton cease and bring to this world peace through the family, the history, the legacy. Don't ever forget me. I'm Dr. Billy Ingram.